Welcome back to Retro Axis. In this episode, I'll be upgrading the Atari VCS with some memory and an SSD drive. Let's get started. So in an earlier video, I actually had taken apart the Atari VCS and rebuilt it. I learned a few things along the way and found a few hidden gems on the circuit board. So if you haven't seen that video, do check it out and subscribe to the channel so you can get more on the Atari VCS. So essentially what I've been doing for the last few days is actually testing emulation on this machine. Overall things have gone relatively well, but I did note that although this is an 8 gigabyte machine, two gigs of the memory are actually allocated for the GPU. So it does have a shared GPU with the actual processor. So there's not a dedicated graphics card in this machine. So it does leverage that two gigs of RAM for VRAM or video RAM. So what I'm gonna do uh, here is actually add, uh, I'm gonna replace the two four gig sticks that ship with the unit with two 16 gig sticks. So this is a 32 gig kit. Now this is a crucial uh, two by 16 uh, SO DIMM. So this is essentially laptop memory. This is DDR4. Now the other thing I'm also going to add is a solid state drive. Um, this, the last video I did where I installed uh, a version of Linux uh, on the distribution, I showed you um, how to essentially blow away the factory installed SSD drive and replace the Atari or Pertus based uh, Linux operating system with your own. Uh, and that's great, but now it means I can't flip flop back and forth. I have to do a full restore uh, each time. So what I wanted to do was add a second drive and have the ability to tr do a true dual boot on the Atari VCS. So adding this second drive will give me that capability. So, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and dive in now. I'll crack the case and we'll get these components put in. So just like in the first video, I'm gonna begin by removing the rear bezel. So you just kind of grip it along this lip and just sort of pull and it pops right off. And then the next thing is to flip it over and pop the feet. Now I did see an official video from Atari come out today. And one of the things the guy actually did was rip off the entire foot. I really don't believe that that's necessary. So um, again, you can just pull this up and, um, just lift this little boot and that's perfectly fine. Now I know again from the previous video that this uses a T10 uh, star or Torx pattern screw. So uh, as you see here, I've got a, this is a T10 uh, and this will go right inside the boot without having to remove the entire foot and it's coming out. So I'll do that for all four. All right, with the four screws out, I'm able to now lift this up carefully. And if you remember from the first video, there's a Wi-Fi antennas right here on the top. So I am going to actually push this back and lean it. So I will remove the screw holding in the Wi-Fi chip. And just push it out of the PCI slot. Okay, and now I can safely remove the entire upper lid, put it aside. All right, now with the top off, I'm gonna begin by removing some of the screws that hold down the shielding. And be real careful of this wire back here, and you can pull it out. Okay, so I've removed the heat shield, and again, the reason for that is it, the heat shield screws actually go into the bottom of the machine. So to get to the RAM, you have to remove those. So the other one I have to remove is there's one hiding under this. So I'm going to remove, this is the little light that lights up the, the Atari logo at the front of the chassis. And there's a screw here behind the fan. One other step is to get to the memory, we need to lift these up. And again, you just lift it up straight up and the ribbon cable comes right out. And I'm gonna do the same for the other side. And we'll pull that one out right here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I have my Atari 
board exposed. What I'm going to do now is flip it over and get to the memory slot. Now there's two memory slots. These are installed in pairs. So I will begin by removing the top one. Pretty straightforward. You just take your finger and you move these two metal pieces apart. If you've never changed RAM before, this is pretty straightforward. Now you know here's the old chip. We're going to put that aside. We're actually going to put it in the new, in the case where the new memory came. And we remove this chip. All right, so here's our new chip. Uh, this is made by Crucial. And you'll note here it's a 16 gig DDR4 2400 SODM. Now, when you're inserting memory, it's important to note, and it's slight, but one side is here, one side is a little bit longer than the other. So the notch, you need to make certain that you put it in correctly. You don't want to jam it in or do anything that's going to damage the chip. So you just line it up, take a look, and you insert these at, an, at a slight angle and then you just press straight down. You should hear a click, just like so. So it's seated properly. And we'll do the same with the second chip. Into the slot, push down, and it's clicked in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the motherboard back into the chassis. And I'm gonna line it up and it should set in there. All right, so we've got the board secured back down to the bottom case. Let's not forget to put in our USB. All right, and the second one, sliding it in, making sure that ribbon cable is in there and pressing down on the flap. Good. All right, now that's seated. So let's now move on to the SSD. So with the board reseated and all my connectors back to normal, I'm now ready to put in the SSD drive. Now, this is a Western Digital Blue SSD. It's an M2. Now it's important to note, you know, I, I looked around for um, this particular type of disc. Now notice this is a SATA SSD. There's other ones out there that are NVMe, and it seems as though NVMe are the most common. So if you go to a store like a Best Buy or an Office Depot, they have drives, but they're NVMe. So I actually had to order this one. All right, so here's the actual chip itself. This is the drive. Uh, you can notice that uh, these are very thin. I mean, really wafer thin. In fact, the bottom of the board doesn't have any additional chips on it. Um, all the chips are here. The storage chips are on this front side. And again, this is a 500 gig Western Digital uh, SATA. Um, drive. So this is not an NVMe, it is a SATA interface. So the way it goes in, you'll note here that there's a notch on the rear. This is what will actually hold it into these. Now they have three of these because there's different lengths of um, M2 cards depending on the size. And this is actually the slot and the orientation that we're going to go. So we're going to put it in with the label facing up and we're going to slip it in almost like we did with the RAM, but not quite at the same angle. And now it's there. And you'll note it lines up perfectly with this rear hole. Now the drive itself did not come with a screw, neither did the, uh, the VCS. All right, it's all back together. Let's go hook it up and see if everything's working. All right, so hooking in the VCS power, HDMI, Put it right here, USB keyboard. So at present I've got the Atari installed with Ubuntu. I'm actually doing some testing of some emulation systems. So um, the extra memory boost will certainly help. Um, but it should boot right into Ubuntu. All right, so taking a look, I loaded up the settings here on the Ubuntu machine. And you can see memory, 29.3 gigs. Now, if you remember, I installed 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, and as I mentioned, it is using uh, two gigs at least uh, for the video. Um, so some of that memory did go to the video RAM. Um, so we can verify that. Now we notice here we have a 500 gig uh, disk also. So disk capacity is 500.1 gigs. So let's take a look at the disk settings. The onboard storage that comes with the VCS that's on the chip, uh, MMC Block Zero, this is the onboard 30 gig drive. And as you can see, this is currently what's running my Linux system. 
And then we have our additional drive that I've installed. This shows up again, it's a SATA drive, so it's gonna show up as dev SDA. So SDA being the first um, SATA disk. disk. Uh, and here it is, 465.78 gigs available. Now I haven't partitioned this or done anything with it, so it's currently blank with no partition. So the upgrades have worked, we're in business. All right, so the system's been upgraded. We've got 32 gigs of memory installed. We've got the additional SSD drive installed. So now I'll be able to go back and set this thing up for dual boot. Before I do that, I am gonna finish working with the Ubuntu installation that I have. And in the next video, I'll be demonstrating some emulation of a couple different systems. We'll look at a PlayStation 2 emulator as well as a GameCube emulator. Um, I've already tested RetroArch, so I know that most of the uh, you know, NES, Sega, um, in television, all those old emulators, they all work perfectly fine. It's just a matter of you setting those up yourself. Um, but we will take a look and see how the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube perform on the Atari VCS in emulation mode. So that's it for this episode. If you like, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Retro Axis.